Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Working Man Ron Doyle. Uh, today's episode is about uh, footer preparation, the preparation for your electrical uh, power coming to the house. Uh, we've got a, a house in Maryland, I'm going to not disclose the location, uh, but it is in Maryland. I'm a licensed master electrician. This is came up numerous times, it's, it's, it's always an issue if you're landing the meter socket in relation to the house and it lands over top of a, of a uh, concrete apron. Now as you can see I've already cut out the concrete apron and that concrete apron is laying right there with the TS, the uh, steel TS400 sitting on top of it. I've already made the cut which is right here and um, jimmied it out with a big pry bar but uh, there seems like the contractors uh, aren't planning this out too good as far as power input, um, the house, the footers poured, uh, block and the brick are laid, the, the framing is done before I ever get a call uh, to, hey, you know, come out and look at the job and uh, give us an estimate on uh, wiring the house up. Uh, looking at locations on this particular house, there's a location toward the back of the garage, uh, which is approximately 35 feet further from the house location. So this is an attached garage. This is a attached garage. The door's been uh, boarded up to keep the uh, wind and rain out. But uh, she goes back that way, about 35 feet. That would make every single home run going into this uh, premise uh, 35 foot, uh, 45, probably 50, 50 additional feet longer than this location. Uh, this location seemed to be the uh, best location. We're doing a 200 amp meter socket. This house right now, uh, Maryland is on 2017 electrical code. Uh, the new electric code that requires the uh, 20, 2020 uh, electrical code that requires the service disconnect below this has not kicked in. We're now at uh, 2023. I think we're going to jump over that code cycle and go right to 2023. Um, but be, uh, the uh, foundation preparation. Um, I talked to different masons. Uh, they told me years ago they would uh, form out the, uh, the foundation and uh, they would get an approximate location of where the meter socket is within 8 to 10 inches of the uh, pipe that comes up from the uh, utilities that feeds the, the power to the meter socket and uh, they would take a chimney block and cut a chimney block in half put it on the location of where the the pipe the riser pipe comes up which in this case is three inch and uh, they would pour the footer and if they needed an additional room so they would pour the footer around the around the uh, chimney block if they needed additional room they would bust out the chimney block to give them about another three and a half inches on either side. Uh, they said the uh, building inspectors didn't have a problem with it. Uh, it just so happens that I'm coming in so late that we've always, we're always running into this issue. Now normally I do the trenching. Um, right now DeMarva Power is requiring all homeowners to do the, um, uh, the secondary voltage which is 120, 240 volt. It's three lines coming to a, a residence. They want you to install conduit and mule tape. If you have a pole application, uh, if you're in close proximity, um, the pole application, they'll have you put a 90 degree long sweep, three inch going up to the pole, trench over, and then a long sweep directly below the meter socket, entering the meter socket. Uh, I've already got it knocked out, so I know my, uh, I know my riser is coming up right here. I've got it marked on the wall. The uh, homeowner wants to save some money, and honestly, uh, going by the price of the conduit, the price of uh, labor and me trenching, he wants to save a buck. I, I can't blame him. If, if it were me, I would do it myself. Um, but he was a little uneasy about cutting the uh, eight part of the apron off and um, taking out part of the footer to get the riser pup pipe where it needs to be. And uh, this particular footer, they overshot it. Now, I found out when I was doing the, uh, the ground rods how far they overshot this. And I'll drop a picture right here so you can see how far out the ground rods are on this house. I've got one ground rod in that location right there and the other ground rod if you see the crawl door it is two foot before the edge of the crawl door on this side and that is 16 feet apart that is twice the recommended length of the the rod ground rod itself um, the, the minimal requirement is six foot so it has to be six foot or greater apart this application um, we're 
we're uh, almost the tallest thing around here and I, I really would worry about this house getting struck by lightning so as a preventative measure uh, I went ahead and uh, done the uh, 16 foot rule and uh, so I'm gonna take you down in this hole and show you what I've got what I'm working with now we have a uh, really wide footer pardon the uh, wiggle jiggle of the uh, all right so we're out 10 inches and this footer is approximately eight inches thick. Well, marked my line in the bottom of the knockout. I'm down here. I've already got my uh, Greek bond block, my bridge block, and already got my uh, ground rods in there and there. Like I like I said. Well, in drilling this, there's a couple ways you could do this to take out this particular footer. And uh, you still have footer remaining underneath of the block, which we're not taking that out. But basically, I drill a series of holes past the location on the left side and on the right side of where the riser pipe is. And then I'll drill a series of holes in the back and a series of holes in the front. Well, what had happened was I had struck a piece of rebar right in this hole location. So I knew there's a piece of rebar going this direction. And I'm going to have to end up cutting that out. We've got a uh, four and a half inch grinder, Milwaukee grinder, with a uh, metal cutting disc. Um, got a uh, segmented wheel uh, for cutting the masonry. I cut the, um, cut the apron, garage apron, with the steel TS-400. I took off the board. And then I had to hand cut all of this with a grinder to trim this up. So the uh, when I get all this done, the masons are going to come back and frame this in and re-pour this, this particular section. But uh, got the, uh, the Bosch rotary hammer. And I don't know if you've, I don't think I've ever showed this on a video. It's uh, pretty effective. It's the SDS Plus. Uh, it has the smaller shank size. I'm running it on the Predator 2000 which is very sweet. Um, it has not tripped any breakers. And we are gonna be using the Bosch electric jackhammer. Let's see, GSH 16 professional. Uh, I think this thing was right around 12, 900 to $1,200 when I bought it. Well, we're gonna see if that jackhammer We'll run on this Predator, and what I'm going to do is work from center. I'm going to chisel out from center, and I'm going to work my way to that line. And uh, work my way to the back. Get that whole entire section cut out so that I can expose the rebar. And I'll cut the rebar on the left and on the right. So the homeowner can get his riser pipe up to this meter socket. First thing I'm going to do is to show you how I determine the uh, where a piece of rebar is. I'm going to start the generator up. I'm going to drill uh, the through holes and I'm going to show you the, the sound difference when you hit a piece of rebar. That right there is a through hole. You see how easy the easy the drill went through it. As you can see right there, it's uh, it's chattering. It's sitting and it's it's basically bumping on top of the rebar, and uh, that's basically how I determine where a piece of rebar is to do straight lines going into the foundation wall, and uh, that usually tells me exactly where they're at. 
eye and ear protection are crucial with this thing. This thing's a beast. Pretty heavy, a little slow on the Predator generator versus uh, household current. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, cutting out the rebar, um, 
seems to be the uh, the only way uh, where I get such a late notice on these jobs in uh, cutting this notch out to prep it for the uh, the riser. Seems to be the uh, the only alternative to th that I have. Well, you seen what I had to do is uh, as far as cutting this uh, rebar out and uh, notching out the uh, the footer. Uh, it's it's a shame that we can't get uh, a little bit more scheduled and where the uh, riser pipe has to come in. Uh, the more of a power for this particular customer is requiring the customer to bury four inch PVC conduit for the, for the primary line from the pole that is 560 foot away to a pad mount transformer location right adjacent to the driveway. And then they're requiring a three inch conduit with sweeps from the pad mount transformer to the uh, riser for the meter socket, the 208 meter socket that's on this wall uh, for the secondary, which is the 120, 240 volt, three wires, and their, their requirements are three inch for that. Um, I'd love to hear from the uh, building inspectors watching this video. Uh, drop your comments on uh, cutting out a, the last piece, the outer piece of rebar of a uh, 24 inch wide footer with three pieces of rebar in it. One of them's now gone. Uh, drop me a comment. Let me know if uh, you all are experiencing the same problems with uh, your utility company and then requiring uh, the conduit risers be level going into the bottom of the meter socket. Years ago, I was able to do offsets to get around the footer. And uh, the Marvel Power stopped me about 10 years ago. And they said, you do it one more time, we're going to refuse to hook you up you're going to have to cut it open and redo it. And this was on a house that had a uh, uh, a brick apron. It came up four foot and it had a, uh, a dressed ledge with uh, brick ends going all the way around the house. And I did an offset to get over top of the brickwork that was coming out past the wall. Uh, that was the very last house that I used offsets on. Uh, they, they said they were going to refuse me. Uh, give me your comments and thoughts on uh, the whole process of how the utility companies are treating you uh, let me know drop me a comment if you like the video greatly appreciate you uh, give me a thumbs up consider subscribing to my channel for future videos on things electricians do until the next time be careful be safe god bless you all have a wonderful blessed day